Hey guys, it's your girl Shady Lane 2121 coming at you with a video on fitness. I guess my update on my fitness competition and everything going on. Um, yeah, so I've had tons of questions. If you follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, um, Instagram is um, under Shady Lane 21, I believe, and Facebook is the same. I'll put the links below. But I, I post progress pictures on there and uh, sometimes like what I'm eating or what exercises. So I've, I've been getting a lot of questions um, on both of those about what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and address that as much as possible um, in this video. Uh, let me say that I am not a personal trainer, um, wanted to be years ago, even got a course and just never did it before I became a nurse long ago. Um, what I do may not be the same as what a traditional competitor would do as far as dieting. Um, so yeah, and anytime, of course, if you are starting a fitness program or diet, make sure that you are healthy enough to start any type of activity. Um, you know, if you have any heart disease, um, hypertension, anything like that, taking any medications, of course, talk to your doctor before starting any new programs. All right, that being said, um, I wrote a couple things down on my iPhone. So, um, the first thing that I think is very important about getting into shape is knowing what your body needs, knowing your macros. How many calories does your body need on an everyday basis if you were lying flat in bed all day long? Then you need to find out, okay, what does my body need for my everyday activities? Going to work, going to the grocery store, chasing around the kids, whatever. You need to figure that out. Without figuring out these things, you cannot accurately lose weight or gain muscle because you know, a lot of people will start off and just say, well, I'm going to eat 1,200 calories. Well, not weight loss is not one size fits all. So 1,200 calories may be good for someone that weighs, you know, 100 pounds. That might be good for them. But if you weigh 200 pounds, 1,200 calories a day is starvation. And once your body is in starvation mode, you're not going to lose weight. You're going to, or you may, you may lose weight, but it's going to stop at a certain time and you're going to eat up all your muscle. So, and it's very detrimental to your body and you're going to get it all back once you start eating again. So, it's very important that you figure out what your calories are. There's numerous places that you can do that online. Um, you can use my fitness pal. That is like my best friend right now. Um... Also, bodybuilding.com, if you look in the forum section and then look under female bodybuilding or under nutrition, there's little things called stickies and it'll say how to calculate your macros. You need to do that first. Make sure you go and do that before you do anything. That's where you need to start because otherwise you're just going to be spinning your wheels. Um, then after you figure that out, You'll figure out how much protein you need, how much fat you need, how many carbohydrates you need, um, how many calories you need to cut off in order to start losing weight, or how many calories you need to add to your baseline if you want to start gaining weight. Um, so you need to figure that out. Some people like to do low carb. Some people do a keto diet where they don't eat carbs or very, very you know, small amount, mainly certain um, vegetables or whatnot. Uh, myself, personally, um, hold on a second, my TV's really loud. Right now what I do is I do something a little bit different, or a lot bit different, than what most people, like I said, do for com uh, competition prep. Um, first thing is I fast. I do intermittent fasting. So I have a 8 hour eating window and a uh, 16 hour fasting window so if I eat my last meal at 8 o'clock at night 
um, then I won't eat again until the next day at 12. Um, yeah, that's basically what I do. Also, I do, if it fits in your macros, which is basically just a way of getting your macros in, um, I choose to eat this way uh, because it just makes sense to me and it works for me. And basically what that means is I know how much protein I want to get in my diet, how much carbs, how much fat, and I eat whatever I want to get to those numbers. So that means if I want to eat bacon and eggs while I'm cutting for my contest, I eat bacon and eggs as long as it fits in my macros. Um, Flex for All, Matt Ogis um, is the one that I've been watching forever and he does, that's where I, I learned about it. Um, Twin Fitness also, I think, well, I don't know if they, yeah, they do it too. Um, so you can check either one of them out for more information on that. Um, but that being said, that doesn't mean that I just pig out on candy and ice cream all day and, you know, that's fabulous. No, I don't. For the most part, I eat pretty clean, meaning I eat chicken, fish, steak, I eat a lot of steak, um, pork, egg whites, um, oatmeal yams, vegetables, what else do I eat? Tuna shrimp. And, yeah, I eat a lot of zucchini because I don't really like vegetables. So it's usually either like grilled zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower, yeah, spinach, mushrooms. Anyways, so for the most part, I eat pretty clean. I'd say 80-20. Um, but if I want to eat, like I said, bacon and eggs. But sometimes I'll eat bacon and eggs every day for the week. When I eat bacon and eggs for the week, I use usually one whole egg and like four egg whites. And the bacon I use is a center cut Oscar Mayer bacon. And I use two servings. So it's used like six pieces of bacon, four egg whites, and a whole egg, spinach, and mushrooms, and a slice of cheese. And that'll be dinner. And a protein shake. Now that sounds like a lot of food. Um, but I do intermittent fasting. So I eat my first meal at 12. Then I eat a snack before I go to the gym, which is usually right now oatmeal, a scoop of peanut butter, a tablespoon of peanut butter, and a scoop of protein powder before I go to the gym. And then I eat my last meal after I get back from the gym, and that's dinner. So I eat three times a day. Um, and that's a big difference on people that say you have to eat six, seven, eight times a day to keep your metabolism going and all that stuff. Do your research, people. Do your research. So this works for me. But again, you have to know what your body um, is able to handle, what your body likes. You have to find these things out because it's not one size fits all, like I said before. And I am pretty anal, so like right now I'm doing my prep for my meals for this week. So I like to eat the same thing every day for the whole week because that way I know my macros all week. I don't have to sit there and figure it out. I know it for the whole week. So this week for lunch, I'm, I made a pork loin, and I will eat um, a serving of that, four ounces or three ounces. I got to look at the package. And grilled zucchini for lunch. This week in my prep, um, I'm taking out carbs. I'm dropping my carbs because carbs don't really like me, and I don't know why they bloat me and all kinds of crazy stuff, whatever. But... I'm not a carb hater. If your body works with carbs, keep them in there um, because they, they give you energy. So for me, I'm going to keep carbs. However, I will only eat my carbs at my second and third meal. So before my workout and after my workout because after your workout, you need the carbohydrates to help shuttle all the nutrition and everything into your muscles after you've worked out. So I feel like I'm just totally rambling right now because there's so much to like touch on in fitness and, and what I'm doing and trying to help other people, it's really hard to try to, I don't know, so hopefully you guys don't get too damn confused with this. Um, another thing is like the scale is a devil. I'm sure a lot of ladies know this already. The scale is a devil. 
Um, the scale can fluctuate three, four, five pounds sometimes, you know, between day to day with holding water, um, being it, it's your time of the month, being you had a cheat day, um, being you had high sodium. So I am trying not to be a slave of the scale, which is really hard. I used to weigh myself like every day. So now I'm trying to weigh myself only on Saturdays. And I use the mirror as my guide. I use my clothes as a guide. And then I also have my body fat tested every two weeks. Um, and that is the best predictor, really, is your body fat, how you look in the mirror, how your clothes are fitting you. Yeah. Um, cardio. Now this one's kind of hard for me to touch on because it just depends. If you are just trying to lose weight, most women are going to automatically hit the treadmill. Um, while cardio is good, it's good for your heart, it's good for your health, when you're trying to lose weight and reshape your body, you really want to hit the weight room. Um, I know this is hard for a lot of women because they're like, I don't want to get huge, I don't want big muscles, I don't want to look like a guy. That's not going to happen unless you have some awesome genetics, you're on some roids, you're not going to wake up overnight and be like, holy crap, I have like 30 inch biceps. It's not going to happen, ladies. It's not going to happen. You will know well before you turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. So don't be afraid to hit the weights and hit the weights heavy. If you want to see a change in your body, you need to hit those weights and not the pink little dumbbells out in the corner or little step ups. No, you need to be squatting, you need to be curling, you need to be pressing. You need to get those weights up because believe me, it makes a hell of a lot of difference than just doing cardio. If you do cardio, you are going to be skinny fat. You're not going to have any muscle. When you're doing cardio for an hour, seven days a week, you're going to start burning off your muscle and you're still going to be skinny, but you're going to be fat. You're going to be skinny fat. You're going to be saggy. You're going to say, oh, I have no tone. The weights. Hit the weights. Hit the weights hard. You can still do cardio, um, but you want to lift. So cardio is very person specific too. So you have to kind of, I would say, add a little bit of cardio slowly into a weightlifting routine and watch watch your you know watch what you look like in the mirror um, right now for me I just up my cardio to four times a week I was doing three times a week so right now I'm doing four days of cardio 30 minutes um, and I do it pretty much moderate intensity usually it's either on the step mill or it's walking on the incline at the highest setting for 3 to 3.5 miles an hour um, I do all my cardio as far as stepping or on an incline to target my glutes because that is my most lagging area that I need to get up right now. So all cardio <coughs> is done on an incline or step mill. So again, you have to look at your body. Um, hey, what happened? I lost my page. I lost my page. Oh, I took a picture or something. I don't know what the hell I just did. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Spot reduction. There is no such thing as spot reduction. I have a lot of people say, Amber, how did you get abs? I want to get abs just like your abs. What exercises do you do for abs? Let me start off by saying, there's no spot reduction. Trust me, I know. If there was spot reduction, I'd have done it already. I would let you guys know the secret. There is no spot reduction. Don't listen to the damn ab thing that you can put on your belly while you're sitting there watching TV. The hula hoop you can do. The creams, the gels, all that crap is temporary if, if, if it works at all. There's no spot reduction. I'm just saying. I'm sorry to bust everybody's bubble. But the only way you're going to see abs is to lose the fat. That's it. That's all. The end. That's the story. It's a done that up. There's no spot reduction. So, if you want to see your abs, you have to lose the fat. Myself, never did I think I had abs. Never did I think I would see abs in my lifetime. Um, I just thought it was impossible. I thought it was bullshit. I thought every model was airbrushed on Oxygen and Muscle and Fitness magazine. I thought that abs were a mythical unicorn in a story. Trust me. Trust me. I'm the last person to think that I would ever have abs. So that being said, 
it's it's you have to get rid of the fat guys you have to some people say that your abs won't show until like really low body fat like 12 percent or something like that well my abs have been showing since i was about 19 percent body fat i'm 17 percent body fat now and they show pretty much all the time right now um so you have to lose the fat ladies i'm so sorry i know it sucks and here's the hard part the hard part is sometimes for your abs to show other parts of your body are going to go because it's fat and your body's just going to lose fat from everywhere your body's going to decide where it loses fat from first so like for me my upper body is getting really thin first before my lower half so i feel like I'm getting really, really lean up here, and my lower body's taking a longer time. So I have, I bought boobs, luckily, because if I didn't buy boobs, I probably would not have boobs right now, because my body is taking all the body fat up top first, in my case. Um, so a lot of women will see that and say, well, I don't lose my boobs, so I don't, you know, and then they stop. So... In order to see your abs, I'm really sorry, ladies, but you have to, have to, have to lose the fat. That's all. Um, you can exercise your abs. Apparently, genetically, I think I had it. I have good abs, I guess. I just was never able to see them because there was fat covering them. I work my abs twice a week. Um, I do maybe two or three exercises for four sets of 15. So usually I'll do um, bicycles, four sets of 15. Maybe throw in some Roman shirt leg lifts um, and some side bends, weighted side bends. That's about all I do for my abs two times a week. Um, you may need more, you may need less, um, but you won't know until you start to shed the fat so that you can see your abs. So I'm sorry, there's no spot reducing. If so, I'd already spot reduced to my ass a long time ago, but that's it's just not going down. I'm so sorry. Um, what else? Water. Water is very important. Another thing that I thought was complete BS. Drink a gallon of water a day. That's what all the fitness people say. Drink a gallon of water. I'm like, bullshit. Who needs to drink a gallon of water? That's a lot of water. I don't really even like water. Well, I had a lot of issues with bloating, with retaining water. And, I mean, around the time of my period, I would blow up like the freaking Michelin Man every time without fail. I would look like I was like three months pregnant. This is no lie. Um, recently, just recently, maybe four weeks ago, three weeks ago, I started drinking a gallon of water a day. I said, I'm going to try it. I'm going to see what happens. It's wonderful. My water weight... I, I stay, I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. It, it makes me look a lot leaner. I don't bloat. Um, I just had my period and I did not bloat for the first time in many, many years. I was amazed. Um, it just, water just really helps. It supposedly kicks up your metabolism by like 33%. Don't know how true that is. But water is amazing. It keeps you fuller. It just, you know. I'm telling you, a gallon a day. That's I, I, I thought it was BS myself, people, but I'm telling you, for me, thumbs up, a gallon a day. I don't drink distilled water. I did get one of those like Brita filters that you can put on your sink, um, and I fill up my gallon every day. Stretch marks. Still have them. Ain't going nowhere. Um, a lot of people are like, well, I don't see any stretch marks. Oh, they're there. Certain cameras um, pick them up differently. Um, I think they have, I don't know if you can see them on my flip. No, it's too low. Um, I'll put pictures up and you'll be able to see them a lot because we took them with a good camera and you'll, they're still there. But um, they've diminished a little bit, but they're still there. They're not going anywhere. And as I'm becoming more comfortable with my body and becoming more fit, I don't really care. I mean, they're there, they're going to be there. I can, you know, I can cry about it, hide in the corner, or I can say, screw it. I got abs, bitches. Who cares if I have stretch marks, right? So, yeah. That's some more of that's at. Cellulite. There is no magic cure for cellulite. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the best thing I've had for cellulite is gaining more muscle and working out and losing the fat and drinking more water 
And I'm sure you've heard all that before, but that's pretty much it. There's no secret. Um, I've tried creams. I've tried all kinds of other crap. None of that has worked. Only thing that has worked is working out. Um, okay. So, that I'll put that as video one because... I just went over a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of rambling and really I don't even know what I talked about. But if you have questions, put them below. I'm going to put this video up and I'm going to do another video and go into uh, my workout plan, what I do, and exactly what I eat and how many calories. And then if you guys have questions, just put them below or you guys can hit me up on Instagram. Okay? Hopefully you guys aren't too, too confused. I know this is a little bit rambly, but I don't know. Alright, sorry, touch you. Deuces.